What's up, guys? Ozzy from Ozox Hardware, and I have a question for you. What is considered entry level? Like, how do you figure that out nowadays? And obviously, this was inspired by the 4060 Ti's launch, which the product itself is actually a pretty good piece of technology, but the marketing has given me such mixed signals. It's touted as a 1080p card, yet it has a price tag of $400 which just a few years ago was considered at the start of high end. So after testing the card myself, I've come to this conclusion. Let me know if you agree. If I can build a brand new computer for the same price as the product, it's not entry level. I don't think there's any way you could spin it otherwise. So today we're gonna to see just how far your dollar takes you. If you're considering the 4060 Ti, what can you build or upgrade to instead. And to show you how simple this is, I decided to time myself finding the components. We can start our search. The computer hardware market has improved so much over the last few years and I made my search pretty easy. I mean back in 2021, my recommended $400 PC used integrated graphics from eBay. So yeah, a lot has changed for the better. Anyway, here's a little sneak peek of one iteration of the $400 computer. And guess what? That took about 17 minutes wasn't that long maybe double that if you're not super into computers but i didn't really have to look super hard or far so i'm here and all of the components are here with me. So let's go over them. Let's kick things off with the processor. And here I decided to go AMD because it's cheaper than the Intel counterparts and gives about the same performance. But there's already an interesting, <laughs> interesting part here. There's so many different budget Ryzen options, which is good, but I couldn't decide on one. <laughs> So instead, I bought three. There we go, those those are the three. Now the one that actually fits in this budget is the Ryzen 5 4500, and I got it for $70, slightly on sale. It's a tiny bit slower than the 3600 because it lacks the L3 cache, but it has that phenomenal upgrade path, and you can go to any of these three Ryzen processors in the future and the 5800X3D, so you, you'll be fine. Now to pair with the Ryzen CPUs, I got an A520M A Pro motherboard for about $80. The only downside is that it lacks PCIe Gen 4. I doubt that will really make a difference here, but I definitely wanted to keep this at like $400 maximum. So I didn't opt for that, just opted for this. It's still gonna work really well. Now I'm gonna do both my RAM and my memory together because the thought process for both was the same and it was basically get the cheapest version I could find. So this is a 512 gig M.2 SSD with PCIe Gen 3, which is totally fine. That's as fast as our motherboard supports. And then I got 16 gigs of DDR4 memory. It's 3200 megahertz with a cast latency of 16. Memory in general nowadays is super cheap. Like the SSD was like $23, $24. The RAM was like 30 bucks. So this was probably the easiest and the quickest portion of this entire build. For the power supply, I went with the Thermaltake Smart. It's not pretty, but it gets the job done. And Gamers Nexus actually says it's not a bad purchase for a budget build like this. Now the video card is an interesting choice because I went with the RX 6600, which slightly puts us over budget, but because it was on sale for $180, it made sense to just buy it anyway. So this is one option. Now this is a little bit unfair because it will put us slightly over budget. In that case, I also bought the RX 5500 XT. It's from 51 Risk, and if you guys haven't seen my videos on these new video cards, which are like 98% new, minus the GPU die itself, then you would know that these are actually not bad purchases. And I bought it from a new retailer. Regardless, the 5500 XT keeps us in budget and it was like $120 when I bought it. It just made the most sense. And then lastly, we have the case. You guys know that I am completely in love with the Thermaltake Versa H18, but unfortunately it was out of stock. So instead we have the Enermax Marble MATX case, which is slightly over budget, but that's only because the thermal take option was out of stock. It won't really affect anything. These components are not nearly power hungry enough for that to really make a difference. And while I build this computer in like 15 seconds, let's talk about the one question that's probably on your mind. 
But Oz, why didn't you choose the AMD Ryzen 6000? Now, of course, there are upgrades that I think would turn this to the next level and would be totally worth it, but that would put us at right around $500 and would kind of defeat the purpose of this entire video. So I suck with this, even though there are better, higher value parts that you could use instead. But the big question still remains. Does our resulted $400 computer work as a 1080p gaming machine? I mean, we are using one of the slowest Ryzen processors and our video card is about three generations old at this point. But yes, yes it does. Older games and esports are totally fine on it. You're averaging somewhere in the hundreds on high settings and downgrading to competitive settings leaves even more room on the table. And even though the PC struggles a little in heavier titles like Hogwarts Legacy, you have a lot of breathing room. On medium settings, my average FPS will almost double to the mid 40s. And you can switch and play around with different hardware to give you better results. Like the RX 6600 is only $70 more and adds a tremendous performance boost. So yeah, I think the proof is pretty clear. I'm not sure what else there is to say, but an entry level to mid range video card should not be the same price as a computer brand new computer that took me less than 30 minutes to build. And I think the frustrating part about all of this is that the 4060 Ti is actually a good piece of technology. Like my Gigabyte Aero model performed really well. It was cool, it was quiet. And the way that they were able to pack performance, even with all of the limitations with like the memory bus and the VRAM and everything is pretty impressive. I don't want people to think that the technology itself is poor. It's just everything else around it that makes it so, I'm scared to say bad, but I mean, yeah. And even more frustrating, I think, is if the card was just $100 cheaper, I don't think there would be this need to prove to the consumer why you should purchase this card. DLSS3, NVIDIA's Reflex, all of these features are super cool but they shouldn't be necessary for this car to be a worthy purchase for someone. So to wrap things up as best as I can, I don't think the 4060 Ti can be marketed as a mid-range card. It, it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> now, I don't think that this conversation is over. I do think there's a little bit more that we can talk about here, especially when it comes to the value of this computer and the value of the 4060 Ti. It didn't make sense within the confines of this video, so I'll have a future video that will talk more about this. But with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you liked it, leave a like. If not, let me know why. What are your thoughts on this? And yeah, I think that's it. I will, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.